In this screencast, we are going to, to figure out how we're going to actually come up with empirical and molecular formulas from actual experimental data. So, first thing we're going to do is start with a very simple example, and that is determining the empirical formula of a species that contains 0 0.035 moles of oxygen, 0 0.07 moles of carbon, and 0 0.210 moles of hydrogen. Now we know that empirical formula is simply the smallest whole number ratio of the elements. And obviously, the, we need the whole number mole ratio. So to figure this out, what we're basically going to do is we know the moles of each one of the components. We know we have 0.035 moles of oxygen. 0.07 moles of carbon and 0.210 moles of hydrogen. Now those aren't small whole number ratios and so we're going to divide by the smallest number which is in this case is 0.035. So we just take each one of those number of moles and divide it by the smallest number. So for oxygen 0 0.035 divided by 0 0.035 is roughly 1, carbon is roughly 2, and hydrogen is roughly 6. The same ratio we're dividing it by the same number so that's okay we're trying to find the smallest whole number ratio and there's the smallest whole number ratio. So now that tells us that the empirical formula is two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So that's our empirical formula. Now at this point the order in which we you know actually list the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen really doesn't make any difference. We're just trying to figure out what is the smallest whole number ratio. So Determining the molecular formula requires us to determine the empirical formula. We need to know one other piece of information. That is the molar mass. We'll come back to that in a moment. So here's a different problem. It contain, this compound only contains nitrogen and oxygen by mass, and we know its molecular weight. So we are given, in this case, a mass percent, and we want to know the empirical formula. So for us to find the empirical formula, we need to know the mole ratio. So we figured out in this last slide what the number of moles of each compound were. So now we're given mass percents of these various things. And it's easy for us to get a mole ratio, knowing the mass ratio, if we do one simple thing. And there's a couple different ways of doing these kinds of problems, and I'm going to show you the, the way that seems the most straightforward to me. And that is we're going to assume we have 100 grams of the molecule in question. And the reason why I pick 100 grams is because we need to know the number, actual mole ratio, and I can convert grams of nitrogen and other things to moles. So if I have 100 grams of this compound, I know that I have 30.4 grams of nitrogen because that's what the mass percent is. And I can convert grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen. And I know I have 69.6 .6 grams of oxygen because, again, I'm assuming I have 100 grams of it. I can convert grams of nitrogen to moles of nitrogen, which gives me 2.16, and grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen, which gives me 4.35. And obviously my empirical formula is not going to be N 2.16 O 4.35. So again, I have to divide by the smaller of these numbers. So in this case it's 2.16, and 4.35 is not, divided by 2.16 is not exactly 2, but remember these are supposed to be small whole number ratios, so we should get close to an integer value, or close to a half integer, so like 2.5. If that was the case, we just have to multiply everything by 2. So my smallest whole number ratio is 1 nitrogen to 2 oxygens. And so my empirical formula is NO2. So the problem comes about in that there are lots of different compounds that would give the same mass percent of nitrogen and oxygen. NO2 is one of those molecules, but so is N2O4, so is N3O6. All of them would give the exact same mass percent nitrogen and oxygen. So for us to determine which one of these possible molecular formulas is the actual compound in question, that's where we use the other piece of data. So we sort of look at, we look at the mass of one empirical for formula unit, so one nitrogen and two oxygens. 
And it turns out the, the empirical formula weight is 46.01 grams. Now, this is 46.01 grams. This is going to be exactly twice that. This is going to be exactly three times that. Since our empirical formula is the same as our, the mass of our empirical formula is the same as our molar mass, that means that our molecular formula and our empirical formula in this case is the same. It is NO2. Let's do one more example. Slightly more difficult. In this case, we have three things. We have hydrogen, we have carbon, and we have oxygen. And we are given a percent by mass. And again, we want the smallest whole number ratio first. Come up with the empirical formula. If we assume 100 grams of material, that means we have 2.2 grams of hydrogen. We convert that into moles. Gives us 2.2. We have 26.7 grams of carbon. We know its mass is 12.01. That gives us 2.2. And we have 71.1 grams of oxygen, and that gives us 4.44. So again, this is our molar ratios. So we have to come up with the smallest whole number ratio. So we divide these all by the smallest value, which is 2.2. And we see that the ratio is 1 to 1 to 2. So our empirical formula in this compound is HCO2. And the weight for one empirical formula unit, if you will, is 45 grams. Again, we have many possible answers as to what the potential compound is. We just know what the empirical formula is. To figure out the molecular formula, we need some other piece of data, usually the molecular mass. And notice that 135 is not equal to 45, so that means this is the empirical formula but not the molecular formula. So we essentially have to kind of take this whole thing and multiply it by 2 or 3 or 4, each one of those coefficients. And the way we figure out what we have to multiply it by is we compare the mass of the empirical formula unit to the given molecular mass. And it should be a very nice, simple ratio of it, like 2, 3. 135 divided by 45 is 3. So we need essentially 3 empirical formula units, because 135 divided by 4 is 3. So it's sort of 3 times this. Now we don't put a 3 in front. We have to take 3 times the whole thing. So we have to multiply each one of those stoichiometric coefficients, or each one of those coefficients, by 3. So the molecular formula is H3C3O6. You can't write 3HCO2. That's not the same thing, because that implies that I have three of these individual molecules, which is not the case. This is the one molecule in question that has all of these attributes.